Hello everyone, my name is Marty Jopson. Welcome to Micro Minute and the fourth global science show. Now, today for you, I have teamed up with the folks at Zeiss and down in Cambridge, we have a scanning electron microscope and we've put a sample under it. What we decided to do is we thought we'd do something topical. We put a, uh, a piece of a face mask under it. So let's jump straight into the microscope. So, uh, oh, I'm gonna have to take Zeiss away because it's over my head. So what you've got here is below me and over there is the control screen of the microscope. Now, Ken is down in Cambridge, in Camborne actually, and he's the guy that set this all up uh, and I'm just sort of controlling it remotely up here in Yorkshire. So the controls are all there. Over there, you can see at the moment, just a camera that's pointing at the stage of the microscope. So these are the samples of the microscope. And if I, if I click here like this, this is the, a little strip of um, uh, face mask that has been cut and stuck to the side of the, uh, of the stage so that we can have a look at the edge of it. Because we're not really interested in the front, we want to see the edge of it. So let's actually have a look at it under the scanning electron microscope. So what I have to do is I now have to change to, um, oops, I do this and then it's a bit, this is a bit, this one's a bit tricky because I've got the wrong kind of, uh, I go click on there. That's it. Good. Excellent. We managed it. And now we can see immediately, we can see the, uh, the, the image of what's under the, the scanning electron microscope. Now, the important thing you have to watch with a scanning electron microscope is the magnification, because it can get crazy, crazy high levels of magnification. So down here, okay, is the scale bar. And at the moment, that's saying 600 nanometers. So that's about, well, 0.6 of a millimeter, so half a millimeter. So that's the scale we're looking at already. It's very close. And actually just over here, is the magnification, and this is the bit I'll be using to zoom in and out. So what we have here is immediately you can see that the face mask is not just one piece of material. I mean, I've made a face mask, and even I've made it out of two layers of just cotton material. But this face mask is made up of three different layers. There's uh, the layer that's next to your skin, which is the layer at the bottom. Then there's the central layer whose job is to trap stuff, particles, and then there's the very top layer whose job is just to stop the other layers falling apart, I guess, and to keep it all clean. So the, the outer layer, if we look at the outer layers first, and then we'll look at the inner layer, but the outer layer, so this layer here, if I zoom in on this a little bit, uh, so what I have to do is I'll centre it on there, and then I'll start zooming in a little bit. So we've zoomed in, and now the scale, oops, I'll go up there so that we're right on the edge. And you can see it's sort of a, a weird tangled web of fibres. And if I, if I close in on the fibres a little bit more, you can see that they're really, really just smooth fibres. This, by the way, this bit here, uh, this is the cut edge. So this is where it was cut with a pair of scissors to uh, so that we could sort of put it in the, in, in under the scanning electron microscope. But all of the fibers there are super, super smooth. And in fact, I'm not, I could zoom in a lot closer, but there's no more information there. It, they're as smooth. And can you see where they're stuck together here? Uh, like there, they're kind of, they're almost like welded together. And that actually tells us a little bit about what these fibers are, because these are not natural fibers. This is uh, plastic, this is polyethylene, and it's what's known as melt-blown polyethylene. And what they do is they have lots and lots of little spinnerets, they're called, after the spiders, because uh, they have those. But it's just basically tiny little nozzles in a row, and they squirt molten polyethylene out of the nozzles. And then above and below the nozzles are big fans blowing air. And what happens is that catches the, the molten plastic as it comes out and stretches it out and blows it into a thread, a continuous thread, which is super smooth. And then the key is you then have a big drum opposite this melt blowing system that's slowly rotating around. And all, the fib all these sort of blown fibres are splatting against it and sticking together as they do so, because they're still ever so slightly molten at that point. So they kind of weld each other together, which is why, I mean, if you look at this bit here, that, 
that doesn't look like two separate fibres laying on top of each other. That looks like one fibre that is sort of has somehow joined to another fibre. And that's exactly what it is. And it creates a, a fabric that's called non-woven fabric um, that, are, uh, that is perfect for this. Because what you don't want, I mean, these masks are actually, they're not surgical masks. They are specifically clean room masks because... That's what they had down in the Zeiss laboratories. They didn't have surgical masks. They don't do surgery, but they do do things that require very clean environments. And clean room masks, what you want to avoid is you want to avoid little bits of lint, little bits of fluff, little bits of um, muck from, you know, kind of fabric, uh, uh, cotton or wool, whatever it is, that's falling apart and gets into things. But generally speaking, you want that in all uh, kind of face mask so let's let's zoom in on the outside of the face mask now joink joink and the outside of the face mask is again a completely different construction um, and it's made in a completely different way it's it's usually sort of press molded but uh, essentially what you have here is like a mesh that's made in one piece that's laid on the inside of the mask so this is the bit that's actually against your skin uh, and you can see this stuff as well if you look at a, uh, an elastoplaster, a, a sticking plaster. The bit that goes on your skin has that on it as well. OK, so again, it's a different type of construction because it has a different purpose. But let's look at the fibres in the middle, because that is the bit that's actually doing the work. And you can see they're much, much finer fibres, super, super fine fibres. And there's a lot more of them and they're packed in. And all you need to do to make this when you're making a blow molded uh, fabric is you just um, increase the speed of the air and um, it makes the fibres thinner. And you roll, uh, you change the variables of how fast the roller rolls and you end up with a much denser fibre uh, fabric. So you can see it's made up of all these fibres and they're all kind of glued together to create one solid mass. This here... This is the cut line again, where the fibres, where we cut through with the scissors and the fibres have been all sort of squished together. But if I go kind of down here, you can see the tangled web of fibres. And the idea of this is to catch all the stuff. Now, the very, very observant of notice will notice something on there. There are some tiny little spots on this. Now, here's the clever thing. This um, electron microscope has different ways of seeing things. And what we can do is if we use a different detector, this one's called the backscatter detector. And what this looks at is it looks at scattered, more of the scattered stuff that's coming off from the back. And you can now see the fibres are covered in these little white dots. And these little white dots are very reflective dots of material. And we also, what we did is we used an X-ray machine to analyse exactly what the chemical composition, I mean, this is crazy that you can do this stuff. We used an X-ray machine to analyse the chemical composition of these individual little specks. And what Ken, who did this, found out was that, because um, we thought initially, well, maybe these are silver uh, nanoparticles. Um, they're not silver nanoparticles. They're actually barium titanate or titanate. Um, barium and titanium mixed together, basically. And the point of these is these are antimicrobial. It's not as good as silver. Um, you might have seen silver in plasters and stuff like that. It's doing the same thing. It's not quite as effective. So there's, they've put these in. They don't say they're in there, but they're there. And in fact, it turns out there's loads of them. In most of the masks you buy, you will see these things. But if you want a really good look of just the... Um, the uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow it right down. I'm trying to remember which way if I do that. It slows it right down so we get a really nice picture. Because we come to the time, this is the end of my time. I haven't got time for any more. If you want more of me, you can, um, you can follow me on Twitter. That's my Twitter address. Um, if you want more scanning electron microscopy, uh, go along to my YouTube channel and have a look there. Once again, um, thanks to Zeiss for um, helping out with this and setting this all up. Um, that's there right over my mush get rid of that um that's all the time i've got for um see you around on the internet and maybe for the next global science show thank you very much bye bye